Hello and welcome to More Than Organized Monday. I'm Miriam Ortiz Pino and I want to talk today about getting off the lists. We all have too much mail and email. It just inundates us um, and it's easy to get caught up and get angry <clears throat> that it's not working well, that it's in your way, that it's being done to you um, and not for you. And so I thought it would be interesting to take a quick look at understanding a little bit more about how mailing lists work and how you can get off of those lists. Um, and it turns out the basic process is the same for both, both physical and digital um, versions. Um, it's all about marketing. And so we just have to go through a series of steps and then you have to be vigilant and diligent. Um, once you understand how it works, it becomes much easier to deal with. There's still action involved and it can be annoying, but hopefully it'll help you understand a little better that it is not being done to you. <laughs> okay, so marketing is a business of its own. It is designed to get you to part with your money and your time in exchange for goods and services. And it's not a scam. It's not something that's done to you. You brought it on yourself. How? Well, you bought something or you looked at something or you signed up for something. All of those things will add you to their marketing list. That's all these things are, are marketing lists. Um, and you actually have the right to remove yourself from it but it takes being proactive and doing it. And that's why it can be tricky because the system is designed to keep you on the list and they make it difficult, but not impossible. So let's talk first about um, physical mail. There's kind of three basic steps you have to do. There's the Direct Marketing Association. You have to register your name and address with them and say you don't want anything um, from direct marketing companies to go to that name and address. The tricky part is if you have a crazy name like I do that gets misspelled often, you have to do it for every version of your name. So in my case, I've had to do it 27 times in the past um, to get all the variations and addresses, <clears throat> but it's worth it. You can do a little bit at a time. I did like three or four a month until it was done. It took about a year and, um, or you can do it more quickly these days because now you can at least do it online. Um, and so that makes it a little bit faster. I used to have to write a postcard for each one. Um, then the second kind is financial services. If you have a bank account, a credit card, insurance, all of those companies typically have other arms of their business that are financial services, and they are allowed to market across the different subsidiaries of their companies. So if you have a, uh, I don't know, let's say, okay, so I have a Gap credit card and that's through Barclays. Let's say um, I get a thing to join a Barclays uh, checking account. That wouldn't be a problem because it's cross-referencing their own company. Um, maybe there's some Barclays insurance that I don't know about. If I got something about that, it would all be that. Once a year, they have to send you a form about how to opt out of those offers and you get it with your bill, uh, whether it's email or um, physical mail, and you just go to that address and, and um, register that you don't want those promotions. But they can do it without your permission to start with. So just know that. Um, catalogs. Every time you order something, you will get the catalog of that company and any of their sister catalogs that are owned by the same holding company and or are in the same niche um, of stuff you've been looking for. So sometimes they'll buy each other's lists. So the easiest way to do this is there's a uh, online thing, catalog choice. You go in there and you register as many of the catalogs as you want. But know this, every single time you order something from that company, even if it's through a store or online, they will add you back to the catalog list. So just know that you have to be really vigilant and asking not to. They used to have to put stuff online that said, 
I do not want to receive your catalogs. They don't anymore. So um, sometimes you have to hunt and sometimes you have to go and unsubscribe just after you get on the list. The problem <clears throat> with catalogs, again, you may have a couple different versions of your name. Um, and what they do is once you're on a list, they pre-print catalogs months in advance. So they'll batch them all. Like all your holiday catalogs are printed in like July <clears throat> with all the different covers that are going to be released over the weeks between Halloween and New Year's. Um, and so you will still receive all those ones that have already been printed and then you will be off the list. Um, so just understand that there's a delay when it comes to catalogs. And it will not prevent you from receiving donation uh, inquiries from charities that you have to do one by one, calling the charity and asking to be removed from their list. Unfortunately, they are in a different category because they're nonprofits. And so they don't have to follow the same marketing rules. So if you've done business, interacted or donated in the past or to a similar cause, they can um, send you information. <clears throat> All right. On the digital side, there, the easiest way is to just begin learning to sort your inbox. So you have groupings of, okay, I get this newsletter. Here's all the different issues of this newsletter. I don't ever get around to reading it. I'm going to unsubscribe. And you can unsubscribe in bulk through most email programs. Um, there are a few apps designed to help get you off of those lists. I've had mixed results because I have three different... Um, email addresses that I read all in my Apple mail. Um, some of them worked really well in Gmail for a while and then they stopped um, and they never worked great. So just know anytime you receive something, it's quicker to just click the unsubscribe button right then and there than it is to complain about it and have it clutter up your inbox and, and worry about it. Anytime you order something online, you're going to get that series of um, notices about your delivery and your purchase. Those you can't subscribe out of, but you can subscribe out of their newsletter or their um, marketing offers after the fact. <clears throat> okay, so that's where you just have to be really diligent and unsubscribe as soon as you get your stuff. Um and then also understand that business to business services. So I'm in business, so I can unsubscribe for all the stuff I buy, but I can't unsubscribe from all the offers of other business services. Those can be sold through a list service and then other companies will market to me. And it's just a matter of deleting, 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 deleting. The delete button is your friend <clears throat> and it's not all spam because they are allowed to do it. So just know that as well. Um, just learn to ignore and delete anything from sources you don't know and are trying to sell you something. <clears throat> all right, that's all I have. I hope this helps you understand the process of getting off the lists. The fewer things that are coming into your inbox, the less frustration you'll have on a day-to-day -day basis, whether it's physical or digital mail. Um, if you are at all interested, I have um, like a step-by-step -step guide of how to get off the lists that has the links to the actual um, sites and things like that. If you are interested, please just type the word remove in the comments and I will um, send you that PDF. All right. Just know that that'll add you to my list as well. Okay. I will see you next week. In the meantime, don't forget to um, subscribe, like, follow, comment, turn on your notifications, and tell all your friends. All right. Have a delightful day.